Good morning. Good morning. And welcome to worship at Pilgrim Lutheran Church and School as we enter the heart of Lent. And the adventure and journey it is to find our spiritual center. Even when we are experiencing anger, Jesus got angry. Jesus flipped out and flipped over the tables of the temple. And in so doing, invites us to think about how our faith interacts with the reality of anger and injustice in the world, as well as what it means to be people of temple, especially at a time in which we can't all come together to the temple, this beautiful temple like we're used to. So welcome to worship. We are a fully welcoming and affirming congregation, a reconciling in Christ congregation of the ELCA. So glad to have a large team of worship and media tech people. Thank you to Mark and to Jeremy and to Stan and to Tim and to Peter and so many that are helping today. Daphne is here, our intern from Lutheran School of Theology at Chicago. So we are excited to share in this Lenten journey together using a brand new uh, online software platform. So pray for us. We're figuring it out. So let's take a deep breath and prepare our hearts and minds for worship with the invocation. And so we begin in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. be with you and also with you. Let us pray. Holy God, through your Son you have called us to live faithfully and act courageously. Keep us steadfast in your covenant of grace and teach us the wisdom that comes only through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Welcome to the children's message. And today I want to ask you children a question. Do you ever get mad? Do you ever get mad? Yes. yes. Do you ever get mad at me? 
Yes. Oh, man. I knew it. Yes. Well, I get mad at you guys, too. Yeah. I don't get mad at Daphne. That's the only person I don't get mad at <laughs> up in here, up in this area. No, but um, it's a natural thing to get mad. And today we hear a story about Jesus getting really mad. What he got mad about was the temple. A temple kind of like this temple here where people came to worship, to hear God's word, to pray to God. But there was a belief at that time that in order for Jesus or for God to hear our prayers, we would have to come buy animals and make sacrifices and do all sorts of complicated money changing because the temple didn't accept the same money that you used to buy uh, the groceries in the marketplace or so on. So it was all very complicated. And he just had it. And he took a whip of cords. He actually, it said the, in John 2, he made a whip of cords. So he was an artist. And I, on top of being an artist, he was able to use the whip of cords to create this disruption to the marketplace that had taken over the temple. What Jesus was doing was getting our attention, saying this is not right, what this temple has become. And he committed an act of civil disobedience, which is what we do sometimes when there is something unfair happening in the world that we want to disrupt so that something new and more fair can happen. And so when we look at the civil rights movement and Rosa Parks, that was an act of civil disobedience when she refused to move to the back of the bus. So when Jesus refused to participate in the temple marketplace, he was also committing an act of civil disobedience to help us remember that to be people of temple is to be people of prayer. And to use our anger in order to take action that will help us be more fair, more just, and more centered on God. Let us pray. God, we pray that you would help center us. And even when we feel anger at things that are going on in the world, that we use that as energy to do something to make a difference. And help us, especially during this time that is so frustrating, to name our anger and also to talk it out and work it out with those that we are frustrated with in our homes so that we can grow through this time and make things better. We pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. We now continue with the reading of the first lesson. The first lesson is from 1 Corinthians, the first chapter. The message about the cross is foolishness to those who are perishing, but to us who are being saved, it is the power of God. For it is written, I will destroy the wisdom of the wise and the discernment of the discerning I will thwart. Where is the one who is wise? Where is the scribe? Where is the debater of this age? Has not God made foolish the wisdom of the world? For since in the wisdom of God, the world did not know God through wisdom, God decided through the foolishness of our proclamation to save those who believe. For Jews demand signs and Greeks desire wisdom, but we proclaim Christ crucified a stumbling block to Jews and foolishness to Greeks, but to those who are called both Jews and Greeks, Christ, the power of God and the wisdom of God. For God's foolishness is wiser than human wisdom, and God's weakness is stronger than human strength. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. We continue with the gospel. Acclamation. Return to the Lord your God, for God is gracious and merciful, slow to anger, and abounding in steadfast love. Return 
God. Your God. Your God is gracious and merciful, slow to anger, and abounding in steadfast love. The Holy Gospel comes from St. John, the second chapter. Glory Praise to you, O Lord. The Passover of the Jews was near, and Jesus went up to Jerusalem. In the temple, he found people selling cattle, sheep, and doves, and the money changers seated at their tables. Making a whip of cords, he drove all of them out of the temple, both the sheep and the cattle. He also poured out the coins of the money changers and overturned their tables. He told those who were selling the doves, take these things out of here. Stop making my father's house a marketplace. His disciples remembered that it was written, zeal for your house will consume me. The Jews then said to him, what sign can you show for us for doing this? Jesus answered them, destroy this temple and in three days, I will raise it up. The Jews then said, this temple has been under construction for 46 years. And will you raise it up in three days? But he was talking about the temple of his body. After he was raised from the dead, his disciples remembered that he had said this. And they believed the scripture and the word that Jesus had spoken. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. Christ. Return to the Lord your God, for God is gracious and merciful, slow to anger, and abounding in steadfast love. The scriptures say, Do not let the sun go down on your anger. But how do we actually do that? How do we process those feelings of resentment and frustration at the end of the day so that by the time the sun goes down, we can feel at peace? I think one key to not letting the sun go down on our anger is how we start the day as the sun comes up. Do we take a moment to pray, to be still and know that God is God, to listen to moving music, to read powerful scriptures that both name our struggle and our hope. Oh God, will you restore us and grant us your salvation? Near indeed is his salvation to those who call on him. He will incline his ear and hear their prayers. Truth shall spring out of Justice will rain down from heaven. No, oh, oh God, will you restore us and grant us your salvation? The Lord will guide you on a righteous path. Vindication will shine down forth as a dawn. Your people will be called repairers of broken walls, making
Walking straight the path to proclaim his reign. This is just an example of one of the musical pieces used in our daily meditation resource, PrayAsYouGo.org. Please check it out one morning. Music like this puts us in touch with our deepest emotions, helps us identify our anger, and frees us to receive a word of hope. Jesus started his days in prayer. Often the disciples would be looking all over for him and he would be in a high place like the pilgrim school roof maybe or on a mountaintop and praying. We may not have the opportunity to go to a mountaintop but we can spend time in prayer each morning to find our spiritual center. I'd like to think that before Jesus came to that temple that day in John chapter 2 with a whip he made out of cords. So that right there is proof that this was a premeditated act. Did you ever think about that? It goes, John goes out of its way to say he made a whip of cords, not anyone else. He maybe didn't even tell the disciples what he was planning on doing. If he had, they probably would have talked him out of it, right? He made a whip of cords and went to the temple because maybe in the mornings or in his time of prayer preceding that moment, he had thought, I'm angry about what's going on at the temple. They have turned a place of prayer and worship and meditation into a den of thieves, into a place where people were being taken advantage of ecclesiastically and economically, that they felt they had to sacrifice an animal in order to have peace with God and forgiveness. And this is why I think Jesus says, you want proof about what is a true temple? Destroy this temple, and I will raise it up in three days. Now, what's interesting is that the Gospel of John is widely believed to have been written after the destruction of the temple in 70 AD. So, as John is writing down this Gospel, he is aware that the temple will be destroyed. And so, he is preparing the people listening to this Gospel for what it means to be people of God without a physical temple. And so when Jesus comes to the temple and says, destroy this temple and I will raise it up in three days, he's actually saying all these transactions, all these uh, sacrifices, all this money that you're paying for stuff, this is not the sacrifice that will set you free, that will forgive you, that will renew you, that will help you find your spiritual center. I am the sacrifice. I am the living link. Forget the rituals of the temples that are tied up with ecclesiastical and economic exploitation. Just come and be with me. Meditate on me, the living word. Jesus says, meditate on the grace and love of God each and every morning. And if you get in touch with some anger and resentment, if it's resentment, you need to ask for strength to forgive 
those you resent, whether it's you or someone else. And if it's anger about something that's not right, about a hurt that has been caused, about an injustice happening in the world, God may give you energy from that anger to take action. And so now back to that moment in which Jesus is coming up out of a time of meditation and prayer. The zeal of God's house consumes him. He engages in a very tactical arts and crafts project and he heads to the temple. And in this moment, as I said in the children's sermon, he creates a teaching moment through an act of civil disobedience to say, this is not right. He named his anger. He processed his anger. And he took action. In this case, very bold action, right? But action to be able to do something about what was not right. Now, sometimes it is difficult to decide what to do or to know what to do when harm has been caused, especially when we have been victimized and to take action may put ourselves at risk or in danger. But anger and pain unprocessed can also do great damage to us. What I know for sure, after years of being a Christian, a human, and a pastor, is we can't let it sit inside our mind and our heart. And God will not let us stay stuck. We serve a God who is present and who is our temple, who is a tabernacle. God's very essence is not a fixed brick and mortar, Roman columns, beautiful temple. God is not a building that can crumble and fall. The living God is a tabernacle that is living, that is a tent that can move with God's people, like God moved across the wilderness. The God who is a living God, a pilgrim God, a God that is present wherever we are. And I think John is helping a people who are now without a temple know that even though the temple was so beautiful and so important historically to the Hebrew people and to the early Christians, they would be okay without it. Because as much as they were grieving the destruction of the temple in 70 AD, they had a living new covenant. And of course that priest, that living presence, that living word, is Jesus. So to review, Jesus spent time in prayer. Jesus got in touch with his anger. Jesus stayed with that anger loud and long enough to discern what to do to process that anger. And Jesus took action that gives us all a teaching moment that God is not okay with injustice. God is not okay with economic exploitation. God is not okay with church, with temple being exploited for personal gain. And something that often stops us from sticking with a practice of prayer and meditation and I've heard this so many times, and I've experienced this so many times, is I'm so distracted. 
I get anxious just being still. I feel like I always need to be doing something. Well, yeah, <laughs> that's what it means to be human. And yet, that isn't a productive time because then we get in touch with those things that are bothering us and eating away at us. And I don't know if you've ever had this experience, but you sit down to pray or to meditate, five, 10, 15 minutes go by, you don't feel like you're getting anything out of it. But you may not realize it in the moment, but you're letting yourself catch up to what's been rumbling around in your mind and in your heart. And in being still, you may recognize something that you need to face and something you need to process and something you need to act upon. And we can spend time as each day begins and ends, imagining that temple, that tabernacle, the beauty of the sky, even the Chicago sky. We all have access to the sky. The scripture says, let us pray. Dear Jesus, we thank you for teaching us it's okay to be angry. We thank you for teaching us that time and prayer and meditation is crucial to finding our spiritual center. And when we find anger in that spiritual center, to not suppress it, to not run from it, but find a way that you are using that recognition to lead us to deeper faith, to deeper healing, to deeper reconciliation, to deeper action. Help us not let the sun go down in our anger, but let us rest this night in peace and rise each morning to your presence. So be with us now in our restlessness, give strength to the weary, hope to the downtrodden, and a renewal to our souls as we find our spiritual center this light. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. We pray for the city, O oh God.
Blessed be the Lord, our healer, whose voice is upon the waters, whose mercy is poured out upon all people, whose goodness cascades over all creation. Amen. Amen. Let us confess our sin, trusting in the abundant grace of God. Reconciling God, you, holy God, you, you search us, us and know us. You, you are acquainted with all our ways. We confess that our hearts are burdened by sin, our own sins and the broken systems that bind us. We turn inward, failing to follow your outward way of love. We exploit the earth and its resources and fail to consider generations to come. Forgive us, gracious God, for all we have done and left undone. Amen. How vast is God's grace through the power and promise of Christ. Jesus, our sins are washed away and we are claimed as God's own beloved. Amen. Amen. Good morning, my name is Hope Johnson and I am one of the youth in this church. I lead youth Bible study every Sunday morning at 9.30 a.m. on house party. Everyone is welcome to come. It's just a, a nice Bible study for people. And also during this pandemic, I have been going on visits, um, some with Ryan Thomas also, where we visit youth or all, all different members or people part of the church and it has just been a beautiful experience bringing Lent packages or ashes or donuts, but just a tangible way to get closer together and bring us closer to God. And, you know, that when two or three are gathered that, you know, Jesus is there. And that even though God is always with us, it's helpful in this time of separation and isolation just to be with one another at a distance with masks and just say hi and see some friendly faces and know that we're not in this alone, but we have each other and we're brothers and sisters in Christ. and. Nothing can change that. Thank you so much um, for being alive and being testaments of God's love every day. And I hope you have a wonderful Sunday and keep going on and keep spreading love. We thank God for Hope. So glad she got her mother's jeans. And uh, we are so thankful for all of our young people, especially Dana Thomas, Pastor Anakari, who are adult mentors for our wonderful high schoolers. And we are very, very thankful for the way this congregation and community and school are passing on leadership and faith to the next generation as we live out our mission to gather, prepare, and send all as leaders for God's, God's mission, mission in, in the, the world. world. That's right. So we continue to thank you for the wonderful offerings flowing in in various ways. Thank you for remembering Pilgrim and investing in this ministry and in this future. And so let us pray together. Next slide. Faithful God, you, you walk, walk beside, beside us in desert, desert places, places and you, you meet us in our hunger with bread from heaven. heaven. Accompany, Accompany us in this meal that we may pass over from death to life with Jesus Christ, Christ our Savior and Lord, Lord. Amen. Amen. Relying on the promises of God, we boldly pray for the church, the world, and for all in need. O oh God of the temple, we thank you for making your holy presence known in the name of Jesus. May we continue to be living expressions of your love and faithfulness wherever we are and wherever we go. Hear us, O oh God. Your mercy is great. God of wisdom, you bless leaders throughout this world to act with leaders with peace and mercy. Work through legislators, judicial systems, and systems of law enforcement to protect the well-being and freedom of everyone. Hear us, O oh God. Your, Your mercy, mercy is great. God of healing. 
In your hands is the power to save and restore. Guide us in accompanying those who are vulnerable and give courage to all those who are suffering, especially George, Justina and Kevin, Melissa, Bob, Sue, Rolf, yes. Bonnie, Karen, Gerald, Tommy, Lisa, Ken, Peggy, Chris, the Grievison family, and all those who name before you in silence or aloud. Defend victims of crime. Bring redemption to those who have harmed others. Give Sabbath rest to all who labor. Hear us, O God. Your mercy, Your mercy is, is great. great. Well, God of eternity, the cross of Christ is your power for all who are being saved. We pray especially for everyone mourning, especially the Asai Cato family in the passing of Naomi, the Ramos family in the passing of Carmen, the Schwartz family in the passing of Gloria, the Reinhardt family in the passing of Ed, the Fries family in the passing of Heinz, and uh, the Grievousland family in the passing of Christopher. And Lord, you know everyone else in people's hearts, and we lift up everyone and we thank you and we pray for all the martyrs whose witness reveals the power of the cross. Give us the same trust in life and in death. Hear us, O oh God. Your, Your mercy, mercy is, is great. great. We entrust ourselves and all our prayers to you, O faithful God, through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Amen. Just a few announcements today as we worship and live and witness in the heart of Lent. Next slide. We are so thankful for all the life groups that are meeting as we live out our theme, finding our spiritual center. And on the next slide here. You will see the Lenten groups uh, link that lead you to all the links to be able to join the men's Bible study, the women's devotional, our daily meditation times, prayer times on Saturday, the wonderful discovering and building discipleship through different voices. Daphne, you want to give us an update on what's happening on Wednesday nights? Go ahead. Yes. Uh, next, uh, next Wednesday at 7 p.m., I uh, receive you uh, to Bible study. Please join us. Wednesday. Amen. Wednesday. Wednesdays at seven. Also, we are getting donations in for our partnership with Refugee One. So thank you very much, everyone who's been bringing in items. Saturdays is the best time for non-school families to drop something off since we're always here open on Saturdays, feeding people through hot meals. Uh, but please do uh, join us for that effort. And I just want to use the next slide. I know it's announcing something that happened March 5th, but way to go. We had an amazing turnout and partnership between our children's ministry, our youth group, and the Parent Teacher League. We had almost 100 people participate in a wonderful event Friday night. It was a virtual pizza party, and the PTL, uh, at a small cost, provided pizza kits for families to make pizzas at home. And then the high school youth over Zoom, not an easy task, led games for the children. So way to go, huge success and kind of a kind of a groundbreaking event. Not only the format, but the fact that we were planning something among the whole Pilgrim community to celebrate together just for fellowship and fun and connection. So thank you to Shelly Riedel and Sarah Witt and everyone at PTL along with Marla and Dana and all the high school youth for making that happen. And uh, finally, we are heading toward in-person worship and communion, not only on Saturdays, which has been happening every Saturday since That's March or April. Time. We've been in-person uh, worship uh, on Saturdays with our Hot Meals community, but we're also going to do a Palm Sunday procession on March 28th outdoors and two in-person Holy Communion services outdoors on Easter Sunday, April 4th. So we're getting excited for that. And so with that, we will enjoy a virtual uh, open house video. Welcome to Pilgrim Lutheran School. 
which has been providing academic excellence with a heart on the north side of Chicago since 1921. My name is Chris Comell and I'm the principal, and I am excited to show you everything that Pilgrim has to offer. Here at Pilgrim, we believe in educating the whole child by incorporating individual learning styles while maintaining a rigorous academic curriculum. We pride ourselves on our small class sizes, which allow students to form positive and lasting relationships with teachers. Our teachers work hard to engage the minds and hearts of the students, developing each child's unique skills and talents. Our unique classroom combination program allows teachers to target their teaching and making student goals that apply and work best for each student. Our early childhood play-based curriculum allows students to explore and discover through lessons designed for each student's learning style. Seventh and eighth grade can be a stressful time for students and families as they make decisions regarding the high school process. We discuss um, options and criteria for enrollment with them while also considering the students' individual needs and abilities. Our students often place in the most competitive Chicago public high schools and the top private high schools in the city and the suburbs. Students also engage in instruction in the fine arts, in Spanish, and they have the opportunity to use technology, both iPads and Chromebooks, with a firm commitment that every child should have access to technology. Students also have the opportunity to learn outside of the classroom through extracurricular activities. Pilgrim offers a wide range of sports and other after-school clubs that help children to express those ideas and ask those questions which are important to them. As a Lutheran school, Pilgrim affirms students in their faith journeys and helps them develop their own spirituality and unique God-given gifts. We welcome students of all faiths, backgrounds, races, genders, and orientations, as we believe that all people are loved and accepted by God. The welcoming and affirming environment at Pilgrim opens up space for our students to ask questions about their faith, about working for justice, as we all together seek ways to experience God's grace in our everyday lives. Our students learn stories from the Bible, participate in weekly chapel services, and engage in meaningful service learning within and beyond Pilgrim. Since its inception, the mission of Pilgrim Lutheran School has been to provide a high quality education in a nurturing Christian community which is why we partner with CLEF, the Chicagoland Lutheran Educational Foundation. CLEF supports our school with tuition assistance, building improvements, as well as curriculum standards. At Pilgrim, your child will have access to superior academics while also being loved and supported. Please call us to learn why we would be a good fit for your family.
We now welcome you to the table in which all of ourselves, all of our emotions, everything we are, is gathered up into the one who took it all on the cross. We lift up high the cross where love takes over, cleansing us of anything we're not meant to hold on to and giving us that passion, that zeal, and converting that energy, even from our frustrations and mornings and pains, into living into faithfulness, compassion, justice, and love. Amen. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give our thanks and praise. It is indeed right and salutary that we should all times and all places give thanks to God, who, on the night in which our Lord Jesus was betrayed, took bread. Can you get communions for the whole team? I yeah. thought we had. Did you give? We do. No, That's for right. the whole team. Oh, yes. Yeah. It's important that everyone communes in here. Um, the night in which our Lord Jesus was betrayed, he took the bread, he gave thanks, and we lift, I invite you to lift up the bread that's in your home, gave thanks, broke it, and gave it for all to eat, saying, take and eat. Yes. This is my body given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. The body of Christ given for you. Right. Jesus loves you. Nothing can change that. And again, after supper, Jesus took the cup, gave thanks, and poured it out for all to drink, saying, Take and drink. This cup is a new covenant in my blood shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sin. Do this in remembrance of me. Amen. The blood of Christ shed for you. Amen. Amen. Jesus loves you. Nothing can change that. He's the strength of your life. And now let us pray the prayer our Lord Jesus prays with us each in our own way and language. Our Father, our Father in, heaven, in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your, your kingdom come, come your, your will be done, done on earth as it is in heaven. heaven. Give us today our daily bread and forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours now and forever. Amen. Amen. Go in peace. Share the good news. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God.